This lesson is entitled Types of Data and Other Terms. What do I need to know? The purpose of this session is to help you learn about the four types of data and provide some of the terms which you will need to know as you proceed through this course. I'm excited that you've chosen to join the old dog for another lecture. This one will deal, of course, with the terms and of the types of data and some of the other phrases that you need to know. And what we will do here is that we will look at some other materials that might be able to help you to give you some visual representation of what we're talking about. Sit back and enjoy. For this lecture, we will begin by looking at the different types of data. There are basically four types of data that we can use in social research. The idea here is, is that these are not mutually exclusive, but instead that you begin with the simplest definition, and out of that simple definition, such as nominal, we find some of the data that qualify to be ordinal, and out of ordinal we find some that qualify to be interval, and out of interval we find some to be ratio. So imagine, if you would, that all data are nominal, and then we move forward through the definitions to more, more carefully explain what the data look like. Uh, keep in mind that, for instance, all people are human beings, but some human beings live in the United States, and among those that live in the United States, some live in Texas, and among those who live in Texas, there are some fortunate enough to go to school at Texas A&M University Commerce. It's really a neat idea. We will begin by looking at the broadest category of data, and that is the categorization of nominal. Of course, Latin a nominal comes from the Latin nomen, meaning name. What this simply says to us about nominal data is that nominal data are simply data which are grouped. Without any rank order, any other sort of thing, they may be grouped. For instance, we might group a set into male and female. We, we might group a set in by ethnicity. We might group people by where they live. Ordinal data or nominal data, which may be placed into some sort of order. Uh, the order may be arbitrary. The order may be specific. It doesn't matter. But ordinal data may be classified. Nominal data are grouped. Ordinal data can be classified. Ordinal data might be something like a Likert scale value where a person assigns a, an approval rating on a hotel they visited by giving it a 5, a 4, a 3, 2, or 1. One of my uh, favorite country western songs, and I happen to have a million of them, has a guy sitting out on the steps and he's assigning women a number from 10 to 1. 10 being the prettiest and 1 being, well, those on the other end. So he tells this lady that she may be a 7, she might be an 8. And in the song he says, I thought I was a hero and she rated me a 0. So a classification which, which places some order in which the order has different distances between it and may be arbitrary is called ordinal. The next layer of data is that which is called interval. Interval sometimes are called integer because these values of data have a uh, methodology by which they are equally spaced. But they're, it's very interesting that interval data, even though they may be equal spaced, are not really uh, able to be divided or to be added. Those type things, they can't be multiplied. For instance, if you consider a scale on a thermometer, is 100 degrees really twice 50 degrees? Scales on a thermometer are interval data. Uh, the reason that Likert scales are generally not seen as interval data relates to the fact that Likert scales uh, don't, are not equal spaced between recipients or even with a recipient. Interval data are data which are equal spaced, they have rank order, but that doesn't make sense to multiply them or to divide them. The most powerful form of data are known as ratio data. Uh, this, this type of data makes sense to compare. They can be multiplied. They can be divided. They have all of the advantages of nominal in that there's groupings. They're like ordinal in that they have rank order. They're like interval in that they have equal spacing. But they have an added benefit that it makes sense to compare them. For instance, if you would consider tuition cost, if someone paid $500 in tuition, 
they paid twice as much as someone who paid $250 in tuition. The most uh, useful form of data, or those which are easiest to handle, are ratio data. So let's review briefly. We had four types of data. They are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And as you uh, set out the broad set of nominal data, then inside that there is ordinal data, and inside ordinal data there is interval data, and inside interval data there exists ratio data. Now you know all. Before we finish this section, allow me to share with you a few terms that may be of interest to you. We have just discussed in the previous lecture the concept of population and sample. Uh, population being every element in a universe of interest. A universe is a group that we've chosen to look at. For instance, we might be interested in the group or the universe of albino Hungarian banded aardvarks. These are an enormous population and they're very well known and very widely studied. Out of the population of albino ba Hungarian banded aardvarks, we would take a sample, a sample being a portion of that population. Now here's a new term and that term is random. Random means that every member of the sample has an equal opportunity of being selected. Uh, you'll hear a lot in education about a random sample. That means everyone had an equal possibility of being chosen. The truth is that, that we really never do much random sampling. It's almost impossible. Most of what we do is convenience sampling. We may think it's random, but we have chosen those that are convenient to us. We might be interested in that sample in a variable, such as if we took a sample of uh, albino Hungarian banded aardvarks, we might be interested in the weight of those aardvarks. Then we might also have an individual data point, which would be the weight of one aardvark of interest. The samples have number. Uh, in other words, how many are in the sample? There, We may have a number in the population. So, you know, you have a couple of things here that are of interest to you. I would uh, remind you of nominal data, data which may be grouped, ordinal data, data which may be rank ordered, but the rank orders are not equally spaced, uh, interval data, they're, they're rank ordered and the rank orders are equally spaced, Likert data are generally considered to be ordinal because the, rank, the spacings, even though the numbers are equal, the decisions between people are not equally spaced. For instance, my very satisfied and satisfied might be much wider than your very satisfied and satisfied on a Likert scale. We also have ratio data. Ratio data, it makes sense to compare. They may be multiplied and divided. So, you know, you're getting some of the terminology down. Population, sample, random, variable, individual data point, number, and then the types of data, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio.